Hi, Victoria. Today we're sharing something that I don't think a lot of our audience knows about us, and that's that we are both people who love notebooks and love to journal. And of course, we're bringing that into our hobbled. In fact, yes, I have my notebook right here as well, Look never far that. away. <laughs> and that's one of many. But specifically, we're talking about five things that we would include in our harp journals. And so what's the first thing that you would include in your harp journal? I always start the very beginning of my harp journal with my why. Why do I want to learn the harp? I think it's so important to remind ourselves the why because I know when I'm feeling defeated, learning something that I didn't think it's going the way I want, it's so easy for us to want to give up. But if I have that why right in front of me uh, and remind me, it's very motivating. So I always start my harp journal very first page with writing down why I want to learn the harp. It's amazing how even though we can know it, we can forget. So writing it down is just so powerful. And that's true for planning as well. So on a practical level, I'm definitely a planner. So adapt this to how you are. I personally like to do a weekly plan where I have an overview of what I'm trying to achieve that week. Different people may want to do daily plans or quarterly plans. Definitely people can adapt this. Sometimes I even plan what I'm going to do my next session after I've practiced. So just thinking about looking ahead and planning and having that overview, making sure that you have that moment to step back and then be able to day to day, not have to think about what do I need to do today. That really helps me with overwhelm so that I'm not arriving at the instrument going, what am I doing now? But I know that the little bits that I'm doing every day is helping towards my bigger harp journey and my bigger harp growth. Having that in my harp journal and also seeing that over time, I can see what I was working through at different periods. And at the end of my heart journal, I like to save a couple pages to make notes uh, relating to heart maintenance. So I have a couple of harps and I would like to keep track of when the levers have been regulated, when I have changed pedal felt. Um, at one point, I even try to track what strings are breaking because I thought it was the same string that keeps breaking and I want to troubleshoot that. So I have a little section in the end um, that I keep notes like that. Uh, and I also find it very helpful to have, you know, what strings I have in my collection, just to have that one page that I can go to uh, so that, you know, if I need something replaced, uh, I can quickly see the list and, and see if it's something that I already have in my collection or if I need to place an order. So heart maintenance information has always been a staple in my heart journal. It's so practical, but it is such a lifesaver when you need it to know where that information is. Exactly. One of the main things that I do in my harp journal is that I keep learning notes in there. And that's not just things that I'm learning in my practices, but things that I'm picking up through different sources. Because you know that I, I talk harps, not just with you, but all the time, if anyone knows me. So whenever I'm discussing with people or listening to podcasts or listening to interviews, especially for talking harps interviews, if I have takeaways or things that that will help me with my own harp learning, I make a point of jotting those down into my harp journal. So I have them as learning notes, little takeaways, things to things that have inspired me, ideas that have come up from other harp, the strategies that they've used that I can maybe use, all of those things. It's wonderful to have. And then when I'm feeling stuck, I can go and look through that and get some ideas in my own planning and in my own playing to implement into my own practice sessions. So those learning notes um, and tips and feedback that I'm getting from people or that I'm hearing all around me is really, really valuable to record and reflect on. So I enjoy doing that in my half journal and that might be something that other people can try and see how it goes for them. I'm very big on list and I have a couple of lists that I keep in my journal to help me remember very important information. So there's a repertoire list and I would make notes of when I have learned a piece. I think it's quite cool when you look back in time to see all the different pieces that you have learned and ended in your repertoire. Um, I also put a list for wish list music because uh, there's so many music that I want to learn and I want to be able to go to one place where I can see what are the different possibility. And depending on the mood, I'm gonna pull a piece that I want to learn when I feel like I'm ready, uh, or you know, I, I might make some notes and say, this is why I couldn't get to it right now. Um, and when I have that skill, this is gonna be a piece I learn. So I try to make little looks like this and have a, a wish list. And the last list on my book that I'm a personal favorite of is my parking lot. Because um, as you have mentioned in other Five Things Radio, sometimes we'll have a challenge spot that kind of halt our progress in the whole piece. And we want to spend some time to hone in on some skill, but that doesn't mean that we don't 
ever come back to those music again because we we will one day so the parking lot is where i would put down pieces that i have to put on hold because of one reason or another my favorite example is nordic spaces i tr struggle with finger independence so i really couldn't pay through the whole piece but it's on my parking lot and i'm reminding myself that once i got the finger independence tackled i'm going to go back and finish learning the piece so it's another one of those lists that i think is very helpful in keeping me on track and not let things fall off the rail. I stole that parking lot idea from you when you told me about it, because it's just so useful. And I hope that some of these ideas may be things that resonate with our audience and that they would like to use. So do let us know, because I always am looking for more things to journal in my half journal, if there's anything that you've included. Do you keep a journal? What kind of journal do you keep? Let's continue the conversation in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.